It's an architectural element that often sits on the peak of a roof. Generally, it's four-sided, and it has louvers in it to act as a vent. I've been meaning to build one for quite some time. Now I have an excuse. That's next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. Today we're at the site of the current This Old House project. And viewers of that program may recall that when we started working on this barn, there was a wing that came out on this side. It was falling into the ground, so we tore it down, put in a new foundation on the same size footprint, and soon we'll be putting up walls. And we're going to fill it with tools. You might say it's going to become the son of the new Yankee workshop, where we'll build some cabinets for the house itself. If you look at the side of the barn, you can see the outline of the roof. Now, midway along the ridge sat this cupola. And we've been wanting to build a cupola for a long time. Now we have a reason. These cupolas originally were meant to provide ventilation for the building. Air would come in through the doors and windows and exit out through the cupola. Today, they're more ornamental than anything else, but they're certainly a nice feature on a garage or a workshop. As you can see, this one is pretty well gone. So I think I'll throw it in the back of the pickup truck, take it back to the New Yankee workshop, and we'll reproduce one. Well, since the original cupola was beyond repair, I took my reciprocating saw to it and cut out one of the corners so I could take a look at the construction details. They had a wood shingle roof that sat on some heavy felt paper on top of three-quarter inch thick roofing boards. There were four hip rafters that sat on top of a plate that was half lapped in the center. Then there was a stud down the corner. The rest of it is pretty much trim. Out here we have a small shingle cleat, a fascia board, a little soffit, a bed molding, and this piece I guess you could either call a frieze or the head casing of this louver. At the bottom of the louver, they used a sill, which allows the water to run off the edge. And they closed in the bottom just using some simple boards. From this section that I cut out, I was able to make a sketch and a materials list and pick up my material for the project today. One of the objectives was to make this cupola a little bit lighter. So I took two by six material, ripped it in half into two and a half inch widths. And the first part of the assembly to make is the top frame. And I'll cut those pieces over at the miter box. What I want to do is square the piece first, slide it down to my stop, which is set at 28 and a half inches, and cut four pieces. But before we use any power tools, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. I've just made a half lap joint. What I'm using is a stacked dado head cutter with about three quarters of an inch width. And I've installed this stop block so that it'll cut the shoulder in exactly the right place so I don't have to measure every single one. What I want to do is run one half lap on each end of these two by threes. These four studs are the corner studs. And I've cut them to meet the slope of the workshop, which is a 712 pitch, a little more than 30 degrees. Now, you might notice that I'm using pressure-treated material. Even though the cupola will be waterproof, if any water got on the inside, it would want to wick up through the bottom of these studs. With the pressure treated, that won't be a problem. Here are all the pieces for one of the side frames of the cupola. And the first thing I want to do is join this short piece to the stud. It's kind of a filler for where the louver is going to go. This piece of 2 by 4 defines the bottom of the opening for the louver. This piece of 2 by 3 is a nailer for the sheathing that closes in the bottom. With the addition of one of the half lap plates, one side is complete. Now I'll build another one just like this. 
The two frames are joined with four pieces. The other half lap plates, which are just attached with a couple screws. And then these pieces, which are a simple butt joint with a couple screws put in at an angle to hold them in place. Now I can attach the other side of the frame. For the last few minutes, I've been working on the hip rafters for our cupola. The pitch of the roof is going to be a 7 pitch, 7 over 12, the same as the workshop. Now let me go over the various cuts on the rafter. At the eave end, there's a plumb cut that's made at 45 degrees on each side to give me a 90 degree corner for the trim. There's a seat cut that sits on top of the frame, and I've notched down a bit to give me the right height for the trim. Up at the other end of the rafter, there is a plumb cut where they meet. So over at the workbench, I'm laying out the other two hip rafters. The first thing was to make that plumb cut at the bottom, or the eave end. I've taken my saw and tipped it to 45 degrees, and I'll make a cut from each side. Now I can use one of the rafters that I've already cut to complete the layout. I'll just line up the top edge, mark the notch and the seat cut, and then I'll also mark the plumb cut. But because these rafters are going to meet the pair that I've already made, I have to reduce the length by half the thickness of the rafter, an inch and a half. So in this case, I want to take off three quarters of an inch. I've tacked all the rafters in place so they won't move around as I make the final attachment. A screw on each side at the bottom and then up at the top, I'm going to take a block with some glue and secure that with a couple screws. I don't want to have screws right in the center because I may be drilling a hole through that for a weather vane. With the frame for the cupola upside down on a couple saw horses, I'm starting to attach the trim. The first piece is this soffit or plancha board. I've mitered it at the corner and I'm using these 60 ring shank nails, stainless steel. The next piece of trim is a one by six fascia board. I'll miter it at each corner and wrap the whole cupola. Now the roof sheathing is gonna be supported by the fascia board and if I leave the top edge square, I'll only get support on the outer corner. A better way is to bevel the top at 30 and a quarter degrees, the pitch of the roof. The fascia boards are a little too high to be cut in my miter box, but the table saw with the blade tip to 45 degrees and a miter gauge are a suitable alternative. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of caulk on these joints to seal them up. Here's another piece that wraps around the fascia. It's a little cleat that's been beveled at the top just like the fascia, mitered at the corners, and what it does is it gives me another shadow line along the eave. Now we're ready to build some louvers. So I made eight pieces of one by three the right length and done the layout. They're set up in pairs. These marks indicate where I need to plow out dados for the slats of the louver. Down the bottom the two marks are an area that I have to plow out this dado which receives the sill of each unit. I've set up the saw with the dado head cutter and adjusted the depth so I'm taking out a quarter of an inch of material. I've just made the first cut to start forming the slats. I've ripped the edge at a 45 degree angle. Now I want to rip the other edge parallel. So I'm going to reset the fence over to the width that I want. And now I'll run the long point of that edge up against the fence to complete the slats. With the joiner fence tipped to 45 degrees, I'm cleaning up one edge of each slat, the one that'll show from the outside. Now I'm ready to start forming the sills for our louvers. This material I picked up at my home center, it's window sill stock. It was a bit wider and I've ripped it down to the width that I want. Now what I'm doing is starting to make notches. I'm going to put a notch at each end to give me these extended horns, which I'll miter all the way around the cupola. I just have to bring it into the layout line and shut down. 
Now I just make a fence adjustment to make the notch on the other end. Well, now for a little assembly of the louvers. You simply slip the slats into the grooves that I made. And then I'll secure the pieces together with some finish nails. Now I'll just take the sill, slide that into position, and secure it with a couple four penny nails. I think that the best way to cut the miters on these horns is to use my hand saw. And I'm just going to leave the line for any fine tuning. The miter fits pretty well, but this side is a little bit long. So here's an old carpenter's trick. With the louvers wedged in place so they can't move, I just run the hand saw right down the joint, removing a little bit of material. Then it should fit perfectly. This freeze board, which is a one by six, just sits up tight against the soffit, and it's mitered on the corners. This is the last piece, and I'm just checking my mark for the length, and I'll miter it over at the table saw. That's good. I like to run a bead of caulking on all the joints on an exterior project like this. One of the reasons I've left the roof panels off up to this point is so that I can drive a couple nails through the soffit into that one by six. To secure the louver, which is still floating loose, I'm going to drive a nail through the freeze board and into the frame. Now I'm ready to start working on the corner boards. I'm using some 1x5 pine. On this side, I'll use a full width piece, and it comes even with the corner of the freeze. And in order to make the corners equal, I've reduced the width of the piece that tucks behind by 3 quarters of an inch. At the bottom, I'll bevel it at 15 degrees to meet the sill. And when I mark it for length, I'll back cut the top about a degree to get a nice snug fit against the freeze. Now I back the saw down to one degree and trim the top. You know, I find that whether I'm working on a building or a small project like this, it's a good idea to pre-assemble the corner boards because this joint will be nice and even, even if the framing underneath is not quite perfect. I like to add one final bead of caulking right along the inside of the corner board. Now I just set it in place, secure it with a few nails. Okay, that's good. Three more to go. Now it's back and forth to the miter box as I fit the corners on this bed molding. It's very similar to the one on the original. All right, and that dresses that up. Now I'm ready to start making the panels that will close in the bottom of our cupola. I've just beveled one edge of the panel at 15 degrees, and that's to conform to the underside of the sill. Now on the sides of the cupola that are perpendicular to the roof slope, I'm also going to bevel the bottom edge at 30 degrees. I'm using MDO plywood to wrap the base. It has a nice paintable surface and it holds up to the outdoors. But because it is plywood, I can't make a lap joint like I did on the corner board. I have to miter the corners. I'm going to reinforce the joint with several biscuits. That's what these slots are for. Some glue in the biscuit slots. And with the biscuits in place and a bead of caulking at the corner and at the top of the panel where it sits under the sill, I'll try to slip it all together. All right. Well, I'm not going to cut out the side where the cupola is going to sit over the ridge of the building until we get it to the job site where we'll scribe it. The last bit of carpentry is to install the roof panels. The roof panels are made out of 3 quarter inch CDX plywood. 
and I've made it so that the joint falls right on the center of the hip rafter and I've beveled it back at 22 and a half degrees to get a nice tight joint. Okay, that fits nice. All right, well that takes care of that. Now for the roof. If you recall, the original cupola had a wood shingle roof. But I think this one deserves a standing seam copper roof. And maybe even a weather vane. But I don't do copper. Norm, copper is so easy to work with. Sure, you've been working with the material for over 20 years. Larry Stearns can make you a finial, a weather vane, can even repair the roof on the local church steeple. How about a roof for our cupola? Piece of cake, Norm. Where do we get started? First, I need to have you bore a three-quarter inch diameter hole in the peak of the roof for the weather vane mm -hmm. shaft and apply 15-pound felt paper to the roof. That I can do. And while you're doing that, I will fabricate copper drip edge to be attached to the eave. And this will allow me to lock the standing seam roof panel onto this edge and squeeze it tight. Mm -hmm. Looks like a complicated piece. How do you make it? It's really not that bad. I start with six inch wide material and a marking gauge that I call a stay. I hook that to the edge of the material and make little snip marks in the end of the stock. Hmm. I suppose if I was doing that, I might mark it with a felt tip pen. Well, that will work. The drawback with a felt tip pen is that it's only marking one side of the material. Mm -hmm. This, in essence, is, is marking both sides. And I'll show you why that's important. I slide the material into the break and align those cut marks mm -hmm. with the top edge, the beam part of the break. Mm -hmm. This first bend, I close tight. I call this a hemmed edge. So you've actually just folded it over on itself. That's correct. And here is a good example of why the marker would be less desirable as a marking instrument, because I have flipped the material over and my marks would now be on the underside. Mm -hmm. The second bend gives me what most people refer to as a kicker. I line it up on my third set of marks. This gives me the, the vertical face. Mm -hmm. And that is wow. the drip edge. <laughs> you make it look so easy. It's great. So you've mitered the corners of the drip edge. Yes, but the key thing about this is I form a little tab at the corner of the face that I can squeeze together which locks the two pieces of drip edge together and prevents them from spreading. Nice detail. All copper nails. That's right, I don't like to mix metals. Now, Norm, I'm going to bend one of the roof panels. And the first bend that I form is the eave bend. And that's the bend that's going to lock over the drip edge? That's correct. Now I'm going to bend the first standing seam, and I'm using the same tick mark technique that I did with the stay for the drip edge. Mm -hmm and I align on my marks. I'm bending uh, slightly less than 90 degrees to match the angle change of your roof. Now the first seam that I formed has one edge turning in. This one will have a double bend turning out to interlock with that and form what is referred to as a double lock standing seam. Okay. The 
Looks great. Let's see how it fits. I slide the panel into position, hooking it to the drip edge. Mm -hmm. I make sure that the standing seam is aligned with the hip, and I secure it to the roof with a copper clip. I have a small tool that makes these, and puts all the bends in them, and punches the two holes. And I do put a nail through both holes and fold the clip over the nail head. After I have put the clips on the standing seams, I go along the eave edge and squeeze that fold tight to the drip edge. And I'm using a pair of seaming tongs. Here's the roof panel that we made just a few moments ago with the double lock that engages our single lock side. Okay, I see that. And if you could nail that clip on while I hold it in position. Okay. Okay. Now we can close up the lock on our first standing seam. see so that tool just bends it right up underneath at the end of the standing seam I do a relatively simple detail where I trim the excess material fold the end around and squeeze it tight with the seaming tongs to close up the end of that standing seam mm -hmm. to complete the standing seam I now start the seam over with a hammer and then I just use a pair of hand tongs to finish it. And once this is completed, we have a real double lock standing seam. It's waterproof, windproof, and it's a 100-year roof. Well, Larry sure makes it look easy. The next thing that he's going to do is go back to his shop in Vermont and build us a weather vane. And when that's ready, we'll install the cupola. Well, for the last hour or so, Larry and I have fitted the cupola to the roof and secured it in place. He's installed the finial, and the final touch, the weather vane, has the This Old House logo and the This Old House lettering on it. Beautiful workmanship, Larry. Thanks. Now, how long is it going to take for it to turn green? It'll be about 20 years. Yeah, it sure is going to be nice. I think so. Thanks for your help. My pleasure. But uh, I've got to admit, this has got to be your ultimate challenge. God, this has been in the wars, this has. What do you reckon about this top? 